Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Sklarbro Country, the virus edition, a.k.a. the Pandy Pods. A.k.a. one egg, four legs. A.k.a. disclosing some feeble clowns who didn't reach dumb people town. I like it. That's it. Mike Huddleston. Three tables, four chairs, and in the back, some stairs. How about that? I feel like he's writing a Gordon Lightfoot song. Jesus What's he doing? Christ. Huddletron, Old Zealand, rocking Sun out. Down, you better take care. If I see my cuddleston in my back stairs. Hey, Sklar Brothers here, singing. We're happy to be here. Uh, it's Friday. We're heading into the weekend. We got stories for you. This is how we do. Trying to give you 30 minutes, 25 minutes just to chill. And, uh, catch your breath. Catch really. your breath. Catch your breath, guys. We need it. We need our collective breath to be caught. We're going to give you a little something to laugh about. Go after the assholes. Let's get into it right Let's now. Let's do it. Now, I've been doing a lot of walking in my neighborhood recently. So have I. And Not in your neighborhood, in mine. No, but I know that a lot of people are doing that. Yeah. And it feels good. Go outside. Maybe that, that's how you maybe that's how you consume this podcast. Clear your head. Uh, but a new hierarchy has emerged. I don't know if you've seen this. Jay, yours is very hilly. Mine's so very flat. I don't flat. see as much. Yeah. You don't see this as much. But the the walkers, there's the walkers, there are the runners, and then there are the cyclists. The runners kind of go where they please. Right. And a lot of half of them have masks. It's a mixed bag. Some have masks. It's hard to run in a mask. Some don't. Right. But they're definitely like spraying stuff all over. Like definitely droplets go everywhere. Sure. Then there are the cyclists who don't care at all. Right. Cyclists do not give a F. They just no. don't care. They're just, they go the opposite direction. They ride right into you. Nobody's wearing a mask. I they feel you, like it's impenetrable. As soon as you get on two wheels, yeah. you feel like none of the rules apply. It That's happens right. with motorcycles too. Motorcycles, when they cut between two cars and cut all the way to the front of the line of they the don't long care. cars. They don't care. I like want to open my door and take someone out and be like, you're not supposed to do this. Cyclists. Like animal, like the animals, maybe they are feeling emboldened by the fact that there aren't many cars out there. Possible. That's possible. Cyclists are the animals of this world. Yes. This is the world that they look to inherit, and they were yes. hoping they could. Yes. Listen, there are a ton of respectful bike bicyclists out there. I know there are. Well, I know some of them. Then there are a bunch of jerk-offs, and this is the way it goes. So this is a story about a, a one such jerk-off. An agro cyclist who, if he was tased off his bike into a ditch- I think people would stand up and cheer mm -hmm. and potentially throw whatever garbage they have on the guy, and that would be okay. On his quivering body? Yep. Okay. On Friday, ACPD issued a community warning about a middle-aged man who had, listen to what he had done, aggressively cursed at, mooned, what? and in some cases struck pedestrians in at least five separate incidents along trails in Arlington. Arlington, Virginia? I think so. This is and the Arlington Cinema and Draft House, which I hope hasn't closed. An aggressive middle-aged man. First of all, how old was he? We're 48. Are we middle-aged? I don't know. We, I guess. If we're in the middle of our lives, I don't and know. We if, are middle-aged. I don't know if I want to live to 96. That's old. That is uh, old. Seriously, given our family history, I'll take 80. We're older than middle-aged right now. If that's the case, we are way older than middle-aged. But I still think. I when think you, they say middle-aged is like 50s, 60s. That's what I think. Late 50s. Mid fifties, late fifties, six, early sixties. That to me is middle age. You're middle not, age man. you're not old yet. Seventies right. and beyond, you're old. Although some people in their seventies look young, man. Yeah, which is weird. Okay, because nobody is going to live to be 120. If you're 60, you're middle aged, but you're not going to live to be 120. No, it's not the middle of anything except for maybe a midlife crisis. Correct. Police say they received numerous tips over the weekend, which led them to identify a sub suspect. Man, you know it's bad when there are numerous people. Many people are saying that you are the worst thing on this road. Calling the police. Yeah. Because who has the police on speed dial on their phone? Nine no one. You had to be, like if someone's an asshole on a bike and they go by, you're just like, I call right. 911. I'm like, this guy's out of control. Really? Yeah. I, if they were a jerk and they just, or they moon me or something, I'd just be like, ah, this guy sucks and just let him go on. But people were like, they stopped. They looked up the police number or they called 911 and they just said, this guy's out of control. That's bad. That lets you That's know how, how bad. bad you are out there. They're actually going to figure it out and call the police and then do that, even if it's not 911. 
this is it. Even the Karens of this world don't have the police's phone number. I mean, I guess they'll they call 911. You that's think that's what, what it that's is? That's what they did. I wouldn't even get hung up on this, Rand. I'm called hung up on it. I know, but like, or Google it quickly and say local police department. But I'm telling you, it doesn't matter. If someone is an asshole, you have two courses of action. If someone is out of control, call you the have police. one course of action. If you're in a car, run them off the road. <laughs> or if you're sensible, you call the police and let them do it. On the evening of Sunday, September 6th, police executed a search warrant at the subjects at the suspect's residence and took him into custody without incidents. What did his parents say? I, <laughs> I hope that a couple of bike cops got him. Live by the bike, you die by the two bike. Two of his own kind. You get taken a, down by two of his own kind. You get arrested by the bike as well, right? They get, t- get they should, taken they into custody. They should drive and make him ride into jail. Ride on like the bike escorted. afterwards, put a rope or like kind of they like they do Cuffs, in cuff Westworld. Him. Cuff yeah. him and then just let him Ride lead him on, on the thing. Like a parade, so to speak. Mm-hmm. A, parade a parade of, of shame. shame. A shame parade. Police said in press release today, David Marlowe, 55. There you go. We were right on the mark. There you go. All right. Which, by the way, is not that much older than us. We're almost 49. This guy's six seven, years. Seven, he looks seven. so much older than us. Said in press release today, David Marlowe of Arlington, Virginia. No way get this guy looks to be 110. No way. All right, he's an older seventy-five tops. He's an older man in, in, in my book. He looks like the type of guy who would wear his skin-tight bike shirt, like to the grocery store, like and for he, hours after the right, bike he'd ride. He drive in the clip-on, like cleat-like shoot. He would drive and get into his car at the supermarket, still in his bike shirt. Mm-hmm. He's that type of a middle-aged douchebag. Yeah. He's the physical manifestation of wraparound Oakley sunglasses on the back of your head. Mm-hmm. At a funeral. I hate him. He was arrested and charged with robbery, assault, and battery, X3, indecent exposure, times five, and felony possession with the intent to distribute marijuana. Wait, what? What, Who is this guy? I... He certainly doesn't sound like a pot smoker. I'll tell you who this sounds guy. like a pot distributor. He sounds like the crime peddler, which to me sounds like a show on TNT. A guy who pedals around New York in 1912 in one of those bikes with the giant front wheel uh-huh. and the tiny back wheel. And he just sells he just, drugs. Well, he commits crimes as he goes down through the Bowery. And it's a show that they put on as a companion show to The Alienist. Am I right? Crime TNT, peddler. crime peddler. I like it. Crime peddler. It's the 19 and 12 Rizzoli and Isles. Okay. He's being held in the Arlington County Detention Facility on no bond. Yeah, man. No bond, no for, bond you. for you, dude. If you do this, to fi- you're too much of a menace to society. He is accused of striking people, several people in fits of rage, attempting to steal one victim's cell phone, exposing his buttocks on numerous occasions. The spike rage. Maybe there is something to what I said before mm-hmm. about this guy. Maybe this world isn't being transferred to the bicyclists in the turn in terms of like power fast enough bicyclists want it faster and he is enraged by it i'm trying to come up with a reason here there there is no reason you will shouldn't be out in the world you will know me by the whites of my buttocks before it's through and if you can't handle the moon then get out of the way yeah. The moon or, is your friend. Give him your cell, cell phone. phone. That's it. The marijuana charge to me was not, was not further explained in the press release. Yeah. It doesn't sound like a guy on weed, does it? This is not This is not weed anger. Definitely not say. a stone dude who does yeah. this. Angrily showing his buttocks. I've never seen a stone person ever do that May, ever. Uh, look, let's be grateful for the weed maybe in this case because maybe it brought him down to just showing his butt. You're saying that the weed had maybe, he not had the weed in his system, maybe would have been even more aggressive. This is this is him relaxed. Yeah, he's like a pit bull or a raccoon. Yeah, he's like a raccoon. He's unpredictable. He's wild. Maybe he needs to be humanely captured and then put down. No, oh. I say humanely captured and released out in the Alaskan wilderness. Okay, right? I'll buy that. Right where Chris McCandless died into the wild. Tell right, him to go they, have some berries and enjoy. Just, his not, life. just you find your way back. Okay. Use your rage, use your aggression. You can have the bike too. Find your way back in Alaska, right? Yes. On Friday, a spokesperson of the police told Arlo ARL ARL now that the department was working with the regional partners to try and determine uh, whether the same suspect might be be behind similar incidents on these trails. Yeah, this is the guy. Nobody else is doing this shit. This is the guy. 
on the Mount Vernon Trail that's being investigated by the U.S. Park Police. Uh, yeah, they're just there's no. This is the guy who this fits the, the description. Guy. Who else is doing this? Police say they're continuing to investigate and are seeking additional information. What like you have what all else the you need? You got you the have guy. all he the fits info the you need. He's the man. He'll be fine. Just give him some weed to calm him down to a level where he's only trying to fight bears every other day. Release right? him. Catch him. Catch, catch him and release. release put him up him. in Alaska. Give him a bike and no Humanely money. Humanely trap this guy. He is like a raccoon. Mm -hmm. Humanely trap him, put him out in the wild. That's, I agree. And that's our first story. Okay. There we go. First story down in the books. When we come back, uh, fantastic story. The, 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 the I guess, Willy Wonka 2.0? I guess. And Willy we'll Wonka 2.0, oh my God. Is Willy what I'll Wonka 2.0, oh my God, is on the other side of this break. This is a Sclabber Country, the Virus Edition. Stay with us. Hey guys, welcome back to the show. Uh, as what we always are reminding you as we head into this weekend, I know these tickets are selling for the live Dumb People Town. If you want to come, we'd love to have you there. We had such a good time September last night. September 26th, Saturday night, 6.30 p.m. Uh, West Coast time, all the way up to 9.30 p.m. Uh, East Coast time. That's the start time. Yep. It's a blast. This is such a fun night. Uh, you're, it's like a night out in your own house. Yep, night out. And go, enjoy the the night out in the comforts of your own home. You can watch it on your TV if you can screen mirror. It's so much fun. Mike Berbiglia, Mike Doty from Soul Coffee, the lead singer. He's amazing. He'll be playing music. And then, of course, it's just dumbness. And there might be a Greenlee. You never know. You never know. Uh, it's good fun times. Eventbrite.com. Look up Live Dumb People Town. You can get your tickets there. Get them now if you're thinking about it because they are going. All the VIP tickets are gone, but there's still some pre-show meet and greet like $15 add-ons, you can come and be a part of the pre-show meet and greet. It's super fun. We'll see you there September 26th. Get your tickets now. And uh, subscribe to our YouTube page, uh, Sklarbro Country. Uh, we just got verified. Yeah, it's kinda cool. I love it. And we're putting up great clips, and we're going to start putting up unseen clips ever before, all this great stuff, uh, including if you want to watch this podcast live and see how we look as we're talking about it. It's let's pretty cool. Let's do it. All right. Uh, all right, let's get into this Ready, last Jay? story. Ready, You yes. take it. I don't know. I, I'm trying to see if I'm remembering this correctly, but wasn't Ronald Reagan, didn't he publicly like Jelly Bellies? Maybe. Didn't he come out and say, I'm into that, like the popcorn flavored Jelly Belly? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I know he didn't publicly like poor people. No. But I think sales spiked. in the, It was a golden era. The, he or the put 80s. his finger on the scale, so to speak, and then the- Scales spiked. Right. Sales spiked. It was spiked. back when sales spiked. That was, that was like when- when it was okay to have a spike. Now right. we didn't, we never want to hear the word spike ever spike again. Spike is the worst thing ever. Well, I won't even eat spike as a seasoning. Okay. So jelly beans, jelly bellies in sure. particular are now in the news. And for a, what I consider to be a far more confusing reason. Okay. Right? Let's do it. It's, this is a story about how with social media and people wanting to believe any nonsense they hear. Yeah. Thousands of people can be, can be I duped. I don't know if they're duped as much as just roped into doing roped something. into doing something that someone doesn't really want to do. That's right. Okay. And then, of course, it's the story of how companies are so good at backtracking, yeah. and walking back statements like that, as LeBron says, has said about the Lakers in the playoffs. They're, they're built for this. They built for this. They built for this. All right, built for squashing dreams, no matter how absurd. All okay. Right, let's this. According to a press release, David Klein. Mm -hmm. Either German or Jewish. I can't founder tell. of Jelly Belly. A a founder of Jelly Belly, according to him, Jelly okay. Belly <laughs> says his current company has hidden gold style tickets in the form of necklaces in places they come across with an interesting story. What does I, that mean? I don't know what that means. I've First got of all, a golden necklace. Which sounds sexual. I've it's, got a golden necklace. It's not a ticket. It's a golden necklace. Ne okay, so we know what a pearl necklace is. Golden necklace. It's got to involve pee, urine. I don't know. For okay, pee Secondly, around someone's neck. Do they? Do they have an interesting story? Like, how do they determine if it's an interesting, interesting story? story or not? Is it what's the, the criteria? Does the person have to have an interesting story? Does the place, place have, have to have, have an, an interesting, interesting story? Where is the interesting story? This is the most amorphous set of rules Please I've ever heard. Be more specific. If they I've have got a golden necklace. It's so gross. If they have an interesting story, do they get a golden necklace? I don't, I don't know. know. Okay, it's way more confusing. Do you want a golden necklace? Think of how much more confusing this is than five golden tickets in five candy bars worldwide. Just redo that. That's the whole story. By the way, they don't that own works. the copyright on that. You can just do it. 
Who's Put a gonna, necklace in in five different bags of Jelly Belly. I don't understand. Don't you want to do that so that people just buy your product? That's also the genius behind the Wonka movie. Because people kept people buying kept, it to try they, and get they it. They sold out all the bars. Okay, Klein. He was the original developer of the Jelly Belly branding. All right, so now so we're now we're starting to understand. He's the founder the of the play. original developer of the branding. Sold his stake in the company forty years ago, so around nineteen eighty. Okay. His current candy company is named Spectrum Confections, which is the worst name ever for I think candy. It's call, yeah, I think it's called Spectrum Confections because clearly Klein is on the spectrum. Probably. Maybe. And he's no longer affiliated with Jelly Belly. That's bad. When Jelly Belly kicks you out, a candy company is like, we can't be connected with this guy anymore. You know, too crazy. That's right. right. So he's giving out a key to a Jelly Belly factory, or I guess a Spectrum, Spectrum Confections, Confections factory. And they make Jelly Bellies. Right, That's fine. what they make. All right. So I went to the Spectrum Confections <laughs> site. You went they, on the Spectrum. They basically sell Jelly Bellies. Okay. They also advertise Jelly Bellies infused with hemp. Maybe this is the whole. <laughs> okay. That's a good now idea to sell weed infused jelly, jelly bellies on a site where kids can get wet jelly bellies. That's right. I don't know. I guess that's more in line with the original Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, which I don't know how often you've seen that it's movie. It's been a little while. I've seen it a bunch. Yeah. The boat scene into the tunnel. Oh, phenomenal. It's a yeah. It's, it's a drug. drug. Yeah, it's a drug. It's, it's, it's right. a trip. <clears throat> All right. I'm not saying anything new. All right. Naturally, many people who've read the story have reached out to Jelly Belly thinking that they might be soon be operating one of their factories yeah you you started something that your your butt can't you you wrote a check that your butt can't cash. or that another company has to deal with jelly bellies and it's like that, why'd but you the, rope why that is this it? a dream of people's like yeah. yeah sure it's 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 always been my dream to have to hire and run and operate a factory especially in these times in the time of covid we're among the worst super spreaders they've happened at factories yeah it's every little boy and girl's dream to have to deal with candy worker unions to yeah. determine parameters for work days and workmen's comp settlements when yeah. someone falls into the vat of sugar. Like yeah. that. So now you want to be dealing with that? Okay. Yeah. I want to deal with healthcare concerns and whether or not we're going to cover rapid testing at the candy factory. Well, uh, that is my favorite part of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Yes. When the Oompa Loompas go on strike oh for longer God. breaks and better healthcare, healthcare options. options. Yeah, that was one of the because best. Because you can't, you can't expect Oompa Loompas to have to have a $575 copay. Not, not and if they go out of network. Because the network's not even a great network. No. And and these guys don't, I mean, they're short. Their deductibles were sky high. Taller than them. <laughs> That's right. No one talks about that side of Charlie getting the chocolate factory. That's right. The year he had to like lay off a bunch of workers <laughs> oh to keep God. down the offset, the kickbacks. He had to throw to the local politicians in order to get them to look the other way because of the pollution violations. Oh, no one talks about that. Yeah. That part of owning a chocolate factory, do they? When they're flying in an elevator up into the sky. Yeah. You know, Willy Wonka forgets to mention that he's going to have to do, deal with some shady politicians. How about the fact the that on day three, he never wants to eat candy again because he's sick of it? Factories are awful places. They're terrible. Go read Upton Sinclair's book, The Jungle. Watch yeah. the documentary American Factory or eat in an old spaghetti factory. You can tell. You just see the disease everywhere. You'll see exactly what we mean. And there's nothing that a little kid loves more than having to make a public statement to a town that relies on that factory for its livelihood that unfortunately, because of COVID and other issues, they're going to have to shutter their doors. Yep. So That's all now your responsibility because you own this factory. A 10-year-old kid has got to tell people this town is now dead so jelly belly of course has, says it has no association with klein and hasn't for decades like most of his lovers thank you uh due to confusion in the marketplace this is their statement so <laughs> this is a statement due to confusion in the marketplace jelly belly candy company would like to take this opportunity to clear up the misconception that is involved with a contest that purportedly purportedly is such a corporate word <laughs> offer because it, it like Suggests that he's not going to really do it. <laughs> Purportedly offers a candy factory as its grand prize. Uh -huh. The company said in an online statement. Okay, so that's what they said. By the way, 
All Klein said was that the person was going to get a key to the candy factory. A key to the candy factory. Nothing was said about owning, owning a candy, the candy factory. factory. I did watch an interview where he said, you will go to UCLA to learn candy making. I'm like, Who? that's not a major at UCLA. And then he's like, then you can rely on me. I will be the expert. I'll take my 35, 40 years of candy experience to teach you how to run a factory. I don't want to run a factory. I don't want to spend time with you. How do we know that this is who's going to teach these people how to run the the machinery? So, as parents, you're going to let your 12 year old son just or any go adult. And hang all out. these people are trying. It can be to adults too. It's not just for kids. It, it's such an odd and bizarre. I guess if your life is going nowhere and you want to have a total change maybe. in your life, maybe this is something that can. Maybe you can also save a just town. the concept that there's only one door at the factory that one key yeah one can key open. can open. Like I'm sure you can sneak in in the loading dock and then say it's my <laughs> factory right. now too. Do you need a key? Just wait till everyone leaves. Jelly Bellies continues. In 1976, Mr. Klein, an independent third party. Way like, to distance. They're That's distancing like, hey, themselves. Not even. Independent and third party, both used in the same sentence. Came up with the name Jelly Belly and other novel marketing ideas. <laughs> Backhanded compliment wow. if I've ever other heard one. Other novel idea. Couldn't even list them. Yeah. Couldn't even list him. He came up with the name, guys, and then a couple of stupid things that we humored him Some with. Some other dumb marketing ideas yeah. we didn't even tell. Hey, you know what else is novel? Coronavirus. Yeah. That's also been referred to as novel. That's right. Nice use of the word novel. That's cheese. All right. Jelly Belly Candy Company has not had a relationship with Mr. Klein since 1980 mm -hmm. when it acquired the trademark. That one hurts. That one hurts. <laughs> has <laughs> not had a relationship. Yeah. Is that so personal, Randy? They could have said no professional affiliation, but no relationship. Has that a relationship? It's a rejection, right? Yeah. Oh, my God. Look, Klein, I, I don't know what to tell you. This company is just not that into you. All right? That's, That's what they're saying. That's it. According to Klein, those who wish to participate will need to pay an entry fee of about $50 to receive a clue in their state. Okay. okay. This is now- this, It's a money grab. But, but by the way- There's no you, magic But in by the way, if you put the golden necklaces in the Jelly Bellies, people would spend $50 to buy bags of Jelly Bellies. Easy. You're just going he about took it the wrong. One, he took the one smart- like business move out of the from that you could pull from the movie Charlie and the took Chubby. it out. Took it out. Each treasure is limited to one thousand participants. Treasure hunt, I guess. Treasure hunt. Yeah, the first clue will be released in Georgia on September thirtieth. With more being revealed in the other states following months, according to news release. Great. So I guess the this treasure hunt is going to encourage people to travel to other yeah, states. Yeah, interact with other people and potentially bring back coronavirus. Okay. Way to go. Way uh, to go. Few details exist about what factory the winner will receive. Of course, he hasn't thought it out. Although multiple media reports indicate the factory will be in Florida. Of course it will. Of course it, it will. It had to be in Florida. There you will know be tigers it. and alligators roaming free throughout the chocolate rivers and rolling green hills inside. Yeah, it's terrible. Like the only factories that are thriving right now in Florida are meth labs. And they are killing it. That's it. They are crushing it in Florida right now. And this is what I got out of this story and why I feel like it's relevant for this podcast, Red. The whole thing to me is just a metaphor for what Trump is telling America. And he's been telling America from the beginning. I'm going to give you a golden necklace. Right. Well, that's what he wants to do. That's right. Like, I'm going to piss all over your dreams. Like Klein, he is appealing to their sense of fantasy. Their dreams. Their hopes. Yeah. And he's, I would argue that he's preying on those dreams. Yep. Because right now, who doesn't who doesn't want to live in a dream world instead of the real world? Yeah, the real world sucks right now. That's it. The problem is the people who can help us make the real world better, they can't be in the dream world as well. No. You can sell the dream to people so they can just get through it. But then while they're living in this dream and trying to get through it, you, you got to be working work to outside get it of the dream to try and make it better so that we can be done with this nightmare. They have to face reality. They can't buy into their own bullshit. There's no factory... You're going to get, I don't think, in this real life, nope. I don't think we're going to factory. And, and even, even if you, you get it, the reality of running it is awful in the current state of the way like things no are. No one's saying that along the way. Like this guy is only selling the flash. And I understand that you got to sell the flash. But my question is, why can you say, hey, this is a huge responsibility. If you want to be a part of this, I think it's a cool opportunity for you. By the way, all he could say is you get to run the factory for the for a day. What would that do? That means you get to go in, grab as much candy as you want, walk out of there, and no one says anything. That's it. And yet people are going to fork over $50 of their hard-earned money for the chance to live a dream life based on a fake factory 
In a fictional story. Yeah, just because it feels better than facing the reality that we're all sitting in right now. You know what feels better than facing reality? Eating bags of Jelly Bellies instead of vegetables. That's right. Every day eating, but your teeth- And in the moment, it might feel great. It might feel better. But it, your teeth are going to fall out. Nobody, you're, nobody's you're ever- diabetes. Nobody's ever lost a foot from eating too much broccoli. That's right. Or too many Brussels sprouts. That's right. Nobody's, nobody's said, hey, you know what? Instead of eating that full bag of Jelly Bellies, give me like five- I just want the taste of them. I'll have the taste. Yeah. But then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make mushrooms and snap peas. And I'm going to eat that alongside of something healthy. Like nobody's ever died from that. No. You die from having like bags of jelly bellies every night. The guy who's doing this, this guy Klein, doesn't look healthy. Yeah. That's the thing. Like look at the guy who's telling you about this life. I mean, he, the fact that he's still living is maybe the greatest miracle of this whole story. I looked at him and I'm like, he looks like he could be eight, 75 years old, six, 73. I bet he's like 53 years old. That's the way it goes. It's it's. This is one of those times where we need to look ourselves in the mirror and say, hey, I know someone's trying to sell us some fantasy. I know someone's trying to sell us a, an escape hatch from the horrors and the nightmare and the crap that we live in. But don't buy into it. Don't buy into it. Don't, don't buy, buy into, into it. it. Be smarter than that. And that's what we leave you with today. That is a show, you guys. There we you love go. you. Stay connected. Stay protected. Don't get infected. Have a good weekend. Remember, this is not a hoax. But we've got the jokes. We want you guys to wear masks and love each other and have a great weekend. Punch a water faucet, wash your hands, and we'll see you next week. La-dee-da. La-dee-da-dee-da-dee-da. La-dee-da.